Hello everybody, it's Cara here and I am so, so mad. Oh, I've got a whippet with me today, which is quite exciting. Hey Lars, oh, don't disappear. You can just about see her, she's just, just sitting here. So, hello darling. Can you do any crazy things on my video today? Hey, gorgeous girl. Um, so, uh, back again. Oh, lots of things have happened since I last saw you. I've, um, I've been away to France. Um, so more, of, more details of that coming up in um, a, a few weeks. Um, oh, more details of that to come. Um, also, Sewing Bee is continuing. What do you think? Um, who are your favourites? What do you think of the challenges? Um, oh my word, I actually have applied a few times to be on the Sewing Bee um, and each time I've applied I've got through to the editorial stage which is very exciting um, but uh, yeah just I, I guess I just don't have some of the uh, characteristics that some of the other people do. I, I don't know, I apply and then when I watch the show I'm like, oh my word, why would you put yourself through that? But I'm sure it's great fun um, and great exposure to um, to meeting lots of new people. So yeah, I'm loving, loving watching that. So let me, I'm going to say a bit of a shorter, oh, I'll say a shorter video, I always say that, don't I? No, actually I don't always say that, but I, when I picked out what I was going to talk to you about today, I thought, oh, I've not got as much to talk about um, in terms of makes, but I've got some plans coming up, so I thought I'd share those with you as well. I hope you're keeping well. Um, we're, we're into May now. I mean, what happened to April? That just disappeared. Um, an extraordinarily quick month for me anyway. Um, and I've taken over, um, I'm a practice manager, I don't know if I mention that very often, I look after t um, a dentist uh, not far from me and I'm absolutely loving learning a new industry, so I've been in retail all my life, so um, changing to a new industry is great fun, um, but I've recently been asked to take on another practice, so I'm now a dual site manager looking after two practices, so I'm literally finding my feet with what that looks like in the world, um, but I've definitely been finding time to finding time to sew and that's absolutely what helps me relax um so yeah i've got a couple of items to show you finished and then some thoughts on some things i want to uh, tell you about that i'm making um so let's um start with what i'm wearing i always tend to do it that way just otherwise i'll, I'll forget and this is the suero top um and trousers from the friday pattern company i forgot them for a second so um as I film this right now, I haven't even taken any footage, but I will go and take some footage in a minute. Um, so if you can hear my whippet paws in the in the hall, and wandering around. Um, but I'll stand up and show you because it's it's a very different style make for me. Let's crouch down a little bit. So the suero top is not a full coverage top, so you can see a little a little boobalicious there, um, and it's designed to be a top and trousers. Um, now I appreciate you can't see all of it there, but they're beautiful and I know that you will have been familiar with um, this design. It's, um, so it's a, it's a grown on sleeve, um, lovely kimono style sleeve here. It's quite, um, well it is very really, like obviously full on down here. It is reversible. I tried, I have, I quite like it on back to front actually, um, but my daughter said it looks like I've got my top on back to front. That's because she saw it this way round but didn't realise that it was going to be potentially reversible. But I, I'm not good at high necks and it is a quite a high neck on the back. Um, I made it using this amazing crepe that I've had in my fabric stash. This will have appeared in many of my videos over the years actually. I've had this in my fabric stash for a long time. I got three metres of this from Colville Fabrics I think a really really long time ago um, and you know what because I, even two, two of the fabrics I've three of the no two of the fabrics I've got to show you coming up with some plans also out of my fabric stash and so actually my fabric stash is diminishing very quickly so as you'd have seen over the last few weeks I have been using fabrics from my fabric stash um, uh, but I love that you know this fabric has been sitting in my stash for years I've loved it for years I actually wanted to make the Zadie jumpsuit out of it because that's an absolute winner. But when I saw the Soero um, um, outfit, I thought, you know what, it's different, it's really modern, but this fabric's perfect for it. Um, and I thought, you know what, just give it a go. Why not? Hi, Alice. Um, why not do something different? There's Alice walking over my tripod. Um, <laughs> she doesn't want to sit with me. There's a 
there's a slither of sunshine over there so that's much more important than with sitting with mum but um it is different for me um i've seen lots of different copies of it um uh and it looks yeah it looks amazing on all of the versions i've seen the jury is still a little bit out for me if i'm honest um and i'm not quite sure why it it's very comfortable it came together really really quickly um it's very simple so um it's not really crossover or anything like that um i'm just going to pause the film a second because my battery is about to run out hang on a second i'll be back in a moment do you know what, being a YouTuber is sometimes a uh, exercise in um, creativity or solution hearing. Um, you can see my ang camera angle has just changed a little bit there. So I've literally now had to, cause my, I, as you know, I film everything off my phone. Um, and so I now have to find a way of connecting my computer to the um, extension lead that's all the way over there. And then put, so I've got extension lead, computer, uh, phone cable going into my phone so that I can record whilst it's charging. More detail than you needed, but there you go. Just uh, the, the glamorous life of an a, a amateur YouTuber. So I was talking to you about the Sahero, as it's, um, uh, yeah, I believe that's correct. Um, give it a go. Um, and yeah, so really simple. Uh, two pieces front, one for the back, obviously, and then a, a simple waistband, um, which is elasticated which is cool. The neckline is, fin I'm always up and down in my films. Um, the neck, bind uh, neck, neck line is finished off with a very simple binding. So it is in credit and then you just hem the seam, uh, hem the, you know what these are called, um, hem the edges. It's incredibly simple to make. And the trousers likewise are, they've got lovely big pockets. Um, so you've got a, a pocket bag and a facing. You've got a very simple waistband and then lovely wide leg trousers. And although I haven't taken any footage or taken any pictures, I will pop some in there for you. Um, I was explaining that I'm, I'm still on the fence about it a little bit, and I don't really know why, if I'm honest. Um, I'm not quite sure what it is I'm not sure about. It is very low cut, um, so I've actually got this on with a, a, it's a bra, but it actually looks like a camisole, because if you're gonna have the gap here, you don't wanna have a camisole this is a very unattractive thing I did there, sorry about that. Um, you don't want to have the camisole sort of poking out here. And I I actually really like, I do like it. My daughter really likes it on me, um, which is kind. I suppose it's just because it's it's something different. Um, I've, not mis I've not seen myself in something like this before. There are ways of overcoming the gap, obviously. Um, I did put, I did add probably about two inches to mine. My word, it would have been very short without. And now there, it looks like a jumpsuit, doesn't it? I think it looks quite big around here, um, but it's not because of any bulk of the pattern. It may just be my own hips, Cara, because uh, obviously there's definition here. You can see this bit here. So I think it, I'm conscious of that um, because I don't normally have something that's quite as tight around the waist. Um, but it is, I actually quite like it with a little bit of a gap, um, as you can see there. I'd love to know what you think. Um, yeah, I would like to know what you think because I've seen lots of versions. My version looks very similar to everybody else's. I've not got a bulging tummy out of it or anything like that. I mean, it's it's a very summery um, outfit. Maybe it's maybe it looks formal, but it's casual. Maybe that's the juxtaposition I'm in on that. Well, when would I actually wear this? What event am I going to where I would actually wear this outfit? Um, uh, but I do like it. I love trying new things. Um, I think it's very exciting. I think it'll be very versatile, the trousers in particular. Can't see myself wearing the top without the, the bottoms, but if I'm honest, um, I haven't tried it on with jeans. Um, so I should do that. Maybe I should have done that before I started filming. And then, because lots of people, so Paige, jo is it Paige Joanna? Um, she's done a reel of changing outfits. So has Emma from So Do It Emma. And everybody looks fabulous in their um, their different versions. Um, and by the time you guys see this, because I'm filming ahead of, ahead of schedule, um, lots of other people will, will have released versions. So by then you'll be well versed in seeing a, a version of this. But I thought I'd pop it on today just to show you. I'm actually, I am actually gonna change um, 
for the next one because I haven't taken any footage of that one either yet. So um, without me putting it on, you're not actually going to see what it looks like. Um, and without putting it on, it doesn't look anything. So I will pause the video for a second, pop that on and I come back to you. Hang on a sec. Okay, I'm back with you. Um, gained a whip it since I left. Um, I say moving cameras and things, for those of you that do vlogging out there, you never get it set up exactly as it was. It's a slight change and I've just been taking photos outside. Gained a whip it by the looks of it. So um, you'll remember me talking about um, this chiffon fabric which I got from Rainbow Fabrics. It was an absolute steal. It was £1.75 a metre I think or something like that. So I've got quite a few metres of it and I have never made the Wilder gown before um, but wanted to give that a go. And so here it is. Um, I'm going to put some pictures in because I've just taken them um, and some footage as well. Kind of match, uh, match Alice a little bit. Um, the Wilder gown, everybody knows about the Wilder gown um, by Friday Pattern Company. They seem to be making a lot of their products at the moment. Um, I have mixed feelings if I'm honest. It is traditionally a high neck. You normally would put this um, like so um, and have it up as, as a high neck. Um, but I'd seen a number of hacks or variations of how to wear it um, and this was my preferred. So if I come right in, because I always do, um, I've basically ruched this right up and then I've put a little knot in either of those um, so that it sits open. Um, I've actually got it on with a little belt. Now in the footage you'll see here, um, I can't get this off now that I'm filming, how typical is that? You'll see in the footage that I show you what it looks like. Oh my word. I really can't get it off. It's only tied in a very loose knot. Right, let's go. So it's quite a um, a, a loose fit. Um, I did elongate the sleeves or made the sleeves a little bit wider um, because I just wasn't sure about the, the plain sleeves that were on it. But yes, yeah, so that's you can't see the bottom of it. I see, appreciate that. But it's it's full length, and you'll see that in in the footage. You'll also see me in the footage, I appreciate you can't see my head right now, which is probably no, no bad thing, that I wanted to cinch it in. Now I'm still on the fence about, I am actually on the fence about this dress altogether. Now I like the look of it, I like the design of it. Um, so actually if I move that to that side, like that, and get my ties caught in and then I sort of ruche it out a little bit, just sort of blouse it out. That's my preferred way of wearing it, just gives me a little bit more silhouette, I think. The key problem I have with this is the sleeves. Because it's a grown-on sleeve, I think, uh, no, it's not, no, it's raglan sleeve, isn't it? I can't move my arms very much, and I'm really curious to hear from other people um, as to whether they've had a similar issue, because that's not specific to me. I don't know whether I've made the, if, even if I made the sleeve shorter, um, I suppose that would give me a little bit more give here, but I can't, just, not that I'm going around doing this or anything, <laughs> um, but my, it just feels weird to me. Maybe it's because I've put elastic in, um, maybe, I, um, yeah, if I took the elastic out, um, or made the, but the elastic's not tight, it's, uh, it's a little bit tighter this side. Um, I actually had them longer and I, I made them shorter because I was trying to make it fit a little differently. I, lo I really like the style of it, but the wearability of it I'm not sure about at the moment. So I haven't actually had a chance to wear it out or anything like that. So I'm going to I'm going to hold judgment overall on on it. I do like it. Um, it's exactly it is exactly the vision of what I had in mind. But you know when I've made uh, over the last few weeks I've shared with you some things that just fill my heart with joy and just can't wait to wear. This isn't sitting in that category right now. Um, but tell me what you think. I'm, I'm curious. I'll put the footage in and the photos. Um, maybe it just overall swamps me a little bit. I don't think it's the fabric. I think the fabric is actually um, pretty accurate for, you know, sort of the right sort of vibe for what I was going for. Maybe I'll change my mind, um, but I always like to be honest with you. Um, it, it, it's a very quick sew, actually. Um, and if you're thinking, oh, I don't want to do all that gathering, nor did I. So I basically looked up how to gather on your your overlocker um, and gen basically it's as simple as changing the tensions. I didn't even change the um, the feed dogs because I felt that that was um, it's a very simple dial to do but it gathered it up 
so much that I couldn't do anything with it. But literally, I gathered gathered it all on the overlocker and then just sewed it in layers. Um, very, very straightforward. I really do like the construction of the the neckline. I think that's genius. And um, yeah, as I say, my preferred way is to, to wear it is open like this. But I don't remember anyone else talking about the arm thing. And that might be just because I've put these, not restrictive, but slightly cinched in um, cuffs on. Um, I could just take those off, but I, I wanted it to be, to have a bit more volume than some of the other, the other versions I've seen. But so the issues may be entirely of my own making, but let me know what you think. Um, I do, as I say, I like it, but I've got more questions about it at the moment than I have um, entirely, completely fixed. My husband likes it and so does my daughter and they're, they're my two main critiques, if you like, or my audience, generally speaking. So let me um, let me take you through some of the additional plans I've got coming up because I have reached um, a point where I'm like, okay, I've sewn a lot. Um, I'm delighted to say that a lot of fabrics have come out of my fabric stash recently. Some of the fabrics that I've hung on to for a long time. And I, I'll reflect on that now, um, that I was just waiting for the right project to come along. So um, I, my, my fabric haul stash rather isn't, isn't big at all really isn't um i think probably i maybe have got tops maybe five or six actually usable pieces of fabric may even be less than that right now um yeah uh, because the rest of the boxes are filled with large remnant pieces or fabric that isn't seasonally appropriate right now so nothing i can do about that but let me take you through some plans because i've gone a little bit crazy on atelier dupe fabric uh, patterns oh, yeah the fabric I also could go mad on but it's not in my um not in my financial reach at the moment um but I could save up for that um Atelier Jute um you'll all know the Frida Blouse um uh, <laughs> highly populated by a little whippet head here um highly talked about by the wonderful Andrea from Beyond the Pink Door hi Andrea if you're watching um, I was totally inspired by hers, as were hundreds of us, uh, or thousands probably. Um, and then Rach from, Rachel from Stitched Up also did a sew along, um, which I haven't had a chance to watch yet, but I know it was very, very popular and I can see why. It's a lovely style blouse. Um, it, uh, for me, I have got that pattern. I haven't made it because of the whole high neck thing that I was nervous about. Um, but when I saw the Olivia blouse, which I'll put the stock photo here. Um, oh, oh my word, it's perfect. It's like the right combination of the Frida blouse and slightly different. So actually, ironically, the neckline sits like this, as you can see from the stock photo. It's got a, a, a blouse, um, a blousy uh, sleeve, very similar to this, not too big, not too small. And then you get the option, it's got a popover placket, um, which is great. Um, and you've got the option to make a shirt, or a blouse, sorry, blouse, oh, get a yawn. A blouse, sorry, don't know why I'm yawning, I'm not tired. Um, you got a, a option to make a blouse or a dress and I really like the idea of a dress. It looks like a really simple straight up and down. I really like the idea that you can cinch it in with a belt. Um, I've tried to make straight up and down dresses before um, and somehow that loses my silhouette a little bit. A little bit like a lot of this is a straight up and down dress but without any definition, I think it's quite a lot um, so I'm curious about that the two other patterns that particularly caught my eye are the Tilda shirt dress oh, I'm just dreaming about that really um, this uh, you know how Instagram spams you with adverts and things well there's an advert if I got it I'll, I'll put it um, on here I think it's from snapdragon I want to say it's a beautiful maxi length shirt dress in this wonderful fabric and it's just haunting me. So I asked everybody on the fold line, because you can ask questions on their Facebook group, had anyone seen a pattern similar to this? And um, the Tilda shirt dress came quite up, came up quite often. And Ali Sews, um, or Ali Sewn rather, over on Instagram is one of the people that I regularly chat with. Hi Alison, um, or Ali. Um, she showed she kindly shared on the facebook group a picture of her version and it looks amazing she did advise to size down because it's quite got a lot quite a lot of ease in it um and so i have purchased that in fact i bought the olivia blouse and dress 
the Tilda shirt dress and also another um, dress, uh, another pattern called Charlotte Lou, I think it's called, which is a very simple shift dress. But what I liked about it is that it, it has a casing for the, for the middle, so you can use a ribbon to draw that in. I actually thought it was quite similar to the Hilda dress um, from Sewing Re Revival. Andrea talks about that dress, um, whereby you've got a casing on the inside, I think then it must pop out, and then you can basically make a belt. But you don't see the back of the belt, you only see the front part. But it basically means you haven't got to worry about holding onto a belt or you know um, not losing the belt so with this one I've done here this is just I just take it on and I tie it in that slightly winds me up but when I put it away I've got to keep the tie and not lose it so long way of saying that I bought the the Lou dress um, as well not really because of the dress itself but I was curious about the construction as it turns out in hindsight it is the simplest just one rectangular long rectangular piece um, that you basically sew on that starts about there and goes round um, but I'll, I look forward to sharing you I'm going to do it um, my Atelier Jupe collection video at some stage in the future once I've made all of those but they did come together really quickly because I basically made two dresses in a day literally from putting down together the PDF to finishing the dresses mad I know but true so that's coming in a future video but um yeah the fabrics I wanted to tell uh, the, the fabrics I'm thinking about um or have made actually now um this one uh, which you'll you'll have seen from um my shop by stash with me I absolutely adore this fabric this is all that's left of what I had um it's absolutely glorious so I'm going to make the Charlotte uh, no no I'm not um, I'm going to make the Olivia blouse um, but the dress version in this because I just think that's going to be stunning really excited about that the Charlotte Lou again I'm absolutely delighted to be using a fabric that's been in my stash for such a long time and this is the second piece of the Itokri fabric that I bought a long time ago that I'm finally getting around to using so this is an iCat um, cotton um, and it's got very little drape because it's so it's quite structured so a shift dress in this fabric is absolutely perfect uh, and I'm going to buy a orange ribbon um, to pick up the orange in that in order to, to draw that in um, then this Tilda shirt dress um, I did think about using this fabric actually um, but I decided to to make the Olivia um, out of that and then um, I got all three patterns from um, Fabric Godmother in their Easter sale because I think they were doing, I think it was either 10 or 15% off, maybe 15% off over Easter, including of their patterns, which I just I thought, oh, now's my chance, I have to do it. So, and then I, and then obviously I looked at the fabrics and she was selling some remnants and she was selling a remnant piece of this a glorious fabric. Oh my word look how beautiful that is it's absolutely lovely now it has got a floor in it um, which I'm not going to be able to find on camera but basically there's a, a, a great big long white line um, which is just a floor in the print not the fabric itself and it was significantly reduced um, this is it's an eco vera I think they call it crepe it is wonderful it's got the loveliest drape on it um, and having having made up two of the dresses I'm just going to go for it I think and cut straight into this um, and make um, my first Tilda um, shirt dress using this fabric I just think it's glorious I really I uh, just love this so that is very exciting so I'll have a little bit of a, a, a collection of Atelier Jupe that I want to take you through as a sort of a video on its own once I've made all those items which is very exciting and then the final two things that I wanted to talk to you about, um, uh, a couple of videos ago now, I talked to you about the Emma blouse, um, uh, and um, it's a free free blouse, um, again I've forgotten the name of it so I'm sorry, I'll try and, try and edit that in and pop it here, it's a really simple blouse, um, and I mentioned in a video a few weeks ago that as I'm leaning across here, sorry, as part of my ambassador role for Minerva, I get provided fabric in exchange for vlogs, uh, vlogs rather, and I chose to make, I'm going to make rather, um, the Emma blouse out of this, which is an ITY fabric, I've never worked with it before, so I thought it would be beneficial to share my experience. 
So this is a lightweight fabric. It's got a, a little bit of stretch one way, but not much the other. It's got a beautiful drape to it, and the Emma blouse requires drape um, in order to make the most out of the really cute flutter sleeves. Um, I'll try and pop the stock photo or, or even my photo of me wearing my Emma blouse there. And then also I bought, um, or rather I was gifted, the, the soup, um, plain viscose jersey. And these are Minerva Fabrics um, core, core lines. I think it's a new range they're doing. Um, and again, this is just lovely, and which is perfect. And I think they'll be really good staples in my wardrobe. So that's some of my plans coming up and some of the th recent things I've made. I'd love to hear what you think. Um, I know I've been sort of, bit of a, on a bit of a roll, really, of my recent sewing journey. And thank you for being here with me. If you want to see more of my journey um, over on Instagram, I'm at so, so mad. So please take a chance to have a look over there. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. In fact, um, like, subscribe and most importantly comment because I genuinely do answer all of the comments. I love to hear from people. Um, I love to know what you're, what you're making, what you think of my makes, etc. Um, so I look forward to hearing from you. So until next time, stay safe and well. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care everybody. Bye bye.